Hi everyone, thank you for coming to Art Aid Film today. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. So, um, this is uh, Papalan's exhibition here, and this is a fantastic exhibition showing her body of work from 2004 to 2014. And none of the works has actually been shown in Sydney before, and uh, there's quite a lot of residencies that she's done. So this body of work includes works that were shown uh, when, when she was having a residency at uh, Pandanon, Art Space, also in Bangkok. Um, and the work you see behind me is actually a work that, sh that was part of the, the Bangkok Biennale in 2018. And um, today for the artists in conversation, um, we have an apology from Dr. Yvonne Lowe. Unfortunately, she didn't feel well last night. So in place of that, we have Professor John Clark, who is here, who will be having this conversation with, um, with Papa Wang. Um, so I'm sure you all know um, John, you know, he's an academic writer, you know, uh, an expert person specialist in contemporary Asian art. So I, I'm sure you find this um, talk very interesting. So I'd like you all to welcome Papa Wang and John Clark. So, um my duty is to read uh, a little page which Yvonne has prepared overnight, I must say, because we only learned that she was so incapacitated she couldn't come last night. And, uh, and then to ask Paptuan seven questions or so, all of them Yvonne's questions, and then uh, we'll be have a bit, a bit of interaction and uh, maybe I'll ask some tricky questions of my own at the end. <laughs> but it is with immense regret that I am unable to join everyone here on this occasion to celebrate Papuan Savannakut's res retrospective exhibition. Congratulations Papuan. There is much to reflect on, particularly that these are works by Papuan that are now being shown here in Sydney for the first time. I am battling multiple viruses, tonsillitis and gastroenteritis, that have robbed me of speech momentarily, and perhaps it is best that I keep these nasty infectious bugs at home with me. That said, I have looked forward to this day very much, no less because Papuan is a friend and collaborator in many ways, but also that at a professional level, I have been engaged closely and critically with Papuan's works over the past years, in the courses that I teach, in my research, and in my curatorial projects. One of my recent papers that I am recent, I'm currently developing is centred on Papuan's role as a co-curator for the Archiving Manifesto exhibition in Cross Arts Projects in 2019. As one of the organisers for the event, our aim for the Archives exhibition was ultimately to bring greater visibility and representation of women artists and to expand gender discourse in Southeast Asian art. We knew that by inviting Papuan to lead the curatorial direction, it would add significance to the exhibition. It has, and I've argued in that paper, lent legitimacy to Papuan's ambivalent role as a founding member of the collective. It had, importantly, opened up a space for her to speak from a place that she has also called her home. Here, the politics implicit in the connections and in the making of such connections is not missed. Where one could not take for granted the place in which an exhibition is staged. This decision to have Papuan Savannah called curate the travelling exhibition of Archiving or Manifesto at Cross Arts Projects was precisely to highlight her interconnected but distance connected, distanced connection with her manifesto, which she was instrumental in founding and developing until she did, migrated to Australia and resided in Sydney with her family since 1996. At the Exhibition Scholarly Forum, moderated by feminist art historian in Australian art, Catriona Moore, the artist intimated that this was the first dialogue that had considered Patron's role in the expanded feminist Australian landscape. That had come more than two decades later. 
For Paktawan, who has shown internationally and participated in international biennales across the world, showing outside of Asia, and specifically here in Sydney for her, I think, may have personal and wider political discursive implications for herself and for the many networks of scholars and curators that have activated this space to elaborate on Asian Australian feminisms. Today, as we gather here to see for the first time works that Patuan has created during the period 2004 to 2014, we are given yet another opportunity to engage with another's history whilst keeping in mind that, pre that presentation of other histories is also very much a shared history. So I now begin with Aptran's first question. To follow on with this point, I'm sorry, I now began with Yvonne's first question. <laughs> to follow on with this point, Paptran, would you please share with us how this idea of a retrospective of missed works came about? And to this end, what does it mean for you to have them shown in Sydney to a Sydney audience who might have missed out on them in terms of how it might close the gap and help one to better understand your thought processes and practice? I say this because your art and practice has evolved over the decades. Um. Yes, indeed, it's evolved over decades and two decades now. Um, the idea to show this uh, work to Sydney uh, uh, started from, um, I think there were questions and more recent, most recent questions was uh, um, about my most recent work that um, seems like it, this continuity of the temple painting, the image that uh, I belong to, to Sydney people, that's one thing. It doesn't change, um, my recent uh, work doesn't change the fact that I um, uh, have been working continuously every year almost every day um, in my studio in this Sydney, in Sydney. I have no other home apart from Sydney. Uh, so I think now that uh, I work with Simon and uh, that is space and uh, this is the opportunity for me to, um, to show this work, this, this um, what he want. Yvonne told as um, miss, uh, missing. Um, maybe the fact that I don't have, um, after 20 years, uh, I don't have um, Sydney representation um, before working with Simon in 2017, 20 years after I landed here. So um, that's the reason behind and I think that may fill the gap or may start, uh, tell the story how my work evolved from um, the beginning to my most recent work. And my most recent work, uh, let me remind you, um, that was um, um, the Riyari Glory in the National at, um, Art Gallery of New South Wales. National 2021. Um, uh, apart from that was um, the um, work, uh, line work, the river um, uh, at um, Penrith Regional Gallery. So um, I hope this series or this um, exhibition will fill in the gap and also see how uh, my work From uh, yeah, it's a very uh, interesting question why uh, in, in Sydney really it's Simon and the Art Gallery of New South Wales who followed your work and given it space and why other institutions, one could name them, perhaps one shouldn't, have not. <laughs> uh, 
particularly other Australian institutions. Um, well, this is an issue which is not only your issue, other people's issue, but we'll re probably return to it. But let's just go through Yvonne's questions to see what she has to raise here. Question two, is there a particular piece that you feel very strongly about its connection to a particular place's history? Or a piece that earmarked, earmarked a particular growth in your practice? that is crucial to understanding your current works. Is that a good question? Um, I mentioned earlier that I work almost every day and um, for me um, the practice is uh, my, my life. Um, the question was, uh, is that particular um, work that I historically Yeah, she's really not, I, I think she's really asking two questions here. One is work which is associated with a particular place, yeah. and then work which is associated with particular, if you like, uh, stages in your own development as an artist. Okay, uh, so let's start with the place. Um, um, the series... Um, at the back. Yeah, at the back. Might want to just have the, with these five, five words. These are this um, series called um, the Elephant and Bush, and uh, it was uh, done during the residency at Pandanon. Um, it was a whole one year, uh, sorry, one month that I was there, and uh, I had the privilege of uh, looking at the landscape when. Um, you know, the family, my young family was uh, entertained, my, um, my partner John here. Um, that, um, I try to, um, to, the first thing first, um, I apply myself to go to Bandanon and to see the landscape. And uh, landscape, uh, really significant um, in Australian um, painting culture, uh, visual uh, language. So I think that was the way to start with. Uh, when I went there, um, blowing wrong with the landscape, um, I am thinking of how or who I was to the landscape. Um, and then Therefore, the elephant turns up. Elephant is significant for me because it's uh, not just animal. It's my name given by my father uh, from his own name uh, that was given by uh, elephant keeper, the Mahmud, when he was a boy at 14 years of age. He started dancing, mimicking the elephant movement, the grace movement of elephant, the elephant keeper started calling him Charm. When I was born, he gave that name to me. Um, when, I, when I went into the landscape, I thought of that could mean a totem, a cultural reference, and that uh, could, uh, I could apply myself to the landscape and therefore also the visual language that I present in my practice. So I think uh, that is the place for me. Um, now, um, the second question was? Um, to a particular place's history. Oh, you would like to say history. But do, are there any of these words, do they mark stages in your development? Um, As I an think, artist. Yeah, I think to, um, to, to have arrived in Australia uh, with my uh, back, background practice as a temple painter, um, that is certain narrative in the temple pra painting practice that, um, that uh, is tricky and that is um, probably is not a narrative that uh, can, uh, 
Japan that I can deliver to an audience here. Um, but temple painting practice was not, was not the only practice that I did back in Thailand. Um, so I started with the process, with the motif, and with the um, with the iconography, and with the process, how to process that. And uh, I think with that alone um, is how I how how it start from that. So then, you had an idea of narrative, which you could then adjust to different symbols. Is that what you mean? Yes, yeah. more or less. More or less, yeah. yeah. Um, it's very important, I think, perhaps we should just at this point emphasise that elephants are not found in Australia. They are not, they have never been here. So it's somewhat convenient, but it's, some, it's also, in a certain sense, it's a kind of provocation mm -hmm. to see the elephant in the landscape, symbolising yourself, of course. Well, that, that is that um, that uh, cultural differences, if if I may say, uh, from the way I how I deliver my my art work. Um, the elephant helped me to open up and uh, to stage into other cultural references like Thai script, uh, like uh, you know the way um, the. the, the, the the process of practice, and also um, um, own interpretation of the same subject, of the common subject with Australian artists. Um, and the other part of the question was, are any works linked with the place's history? And perhaps we should point out, or you should tell us, how this picture in the middle the two broken cans relates to actually to a particular historical event in Thailand. Um, yes, that was uh, from the residency in Silicon University. That was short two weeks, but uh, it was uh, every day was not quiet. Uh, it was during the political um, unsettled, um, unsettled political uh, climate in Bangkok uh, where um, a group of a street protests um, maneuver themselves uh, around in the city um, so much that my uh, engagement uh, to give lecture at Silicon University with the postgraduate um, students was cancelled uh, without notice. Uh, I had to um, ring uh, the uh, organizer to, to make a call to how happen. Um, during that time, it was 2013, 10 years after my uh, residency in Bandanon, the elephant. <coughs> um, during the residency, there was this street noise I cannot ignore. Um, however, when I went in the street um, and I um, you see, as you, as you go, you start uh, taking picture to your mobile phone as technology go. And it's, um, so it was during that short, not two weeks now, because I, I was quite isolated in the printmaking um, department, um, 50 kilometers away the in the front of the picture. The picture was um, from out of the, picture that I took from my mobile phone, 200 photographs of them, all of which nobody was there. Um, I, uh, I was surprised myself why there was that collection within that short two days, one day even. Um, that street protest uh, was the beginning of the political, the coup, coup d'etat that stage the next year. And that was when I uh, finished this work, completed this work, by putting 
by choosing five pairs of photographs not related to each other. Break one apart and insert one in the middle. So if you looked at that picture, that was that broken can ornament, you know, the hanging in the uh, cloth hanger, break apart and insert one in the middle. The series was called Days of Endless Meaninglessness. That's how my state uh, of um, mental, my mental state at that time. Um, so I painted them uh, out of uh, the depression that um, uh, having to come to terms how, uh, how the Thai culture had split. And uh, that was no, um, it, does, it didn't make sense to me. It did not make sense. It doesn't make sense now. So um, that, uh, that was the, that was the background of this. Yeah, but the, the, the important thing is that this, this image, which looks like a kind of abstract in a studio game by an artist, is in fact actually taken out of the street, yeah. first of all. Mm -hmm. And secondly, this image, and this is a very important re thing to mention, is how it was taken up by the students. Tell us how you found it. Uh, not the students. Well, that, that was in Bangkok Post. In Bangkok Post. Tell, tell um, us about that. So, a year later, uh, after I showed this, I uh, put this uh, series in an exhibition in 2014, uh, and that was um, a few months after the coup d'etat took place um, and the current government now, um, to be precise. Um, at, after one year in commemoration of the coup d'etat, um, I spot that piece of work in a newspaper in uh, online newspaper and um, only to be taken like 24 hours later. Um, to be removed. Not, to remove. It was not during the time of my exhibition. I was not asked permission, but the statement probably has inspired someone to put that there just to commemorate what happened during the state. Um, um. I mean, it's always very difficult to notice when something is has a, a resonance like that, which is time and place and polit politics specific, when it just looks like an abstract painting. And, and I think we should do something like that. Uh, let's move on to uh, the third question from uh, Yvonne. As we all know, Papuan, you were trained as a muralist in a temple. Well, that's not true, but anyway, that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> and when you moved to Sydney, you've had to relearn how to become an artist. That's not true either. And to define for yourself what art practice means, maybe, and maybe also what the measurement of success is 20 years on. Could you please share with us how the first 10 years of your work contrasted with the last decade in terms of your growth and challenges? So um, so uh, forget about the training as mural practice and um, the art uh, practice that I uh, continue to uh, work on. I have been working professionally um, from 1982 uh, to now, so it's more than 40 years. Um, um, the work uh, is almost always informed by uh, life lived experience. Um, the success uh, depends on how, how, how we take as success. Um, during the first four years of my um, professional career, I did not earn money from my art practice. Uh, I did a translating job and it's always starting from 9 p.m. to 12. I only allow them three hours uh, to do my earning career, my money career. Um, but the rest of the day, I uh, just uh, put my head down into the studio practice 
I did not go to art school, so uh, I consider myself um, um, not trained, and I have to work harder. Um, um, my success would be uh, after four years without uh, earning um, money from making art, without earning fame from doing that. Um, I asked myself, would I, could I stop making art? And I said I could, but I would come back not long after that, like a few weeks. I give myself a few weeks uh, to not doing it. And um, after give that answer to myself, um, I think that was the moment that I made decision that I I, I am not um, that started, but the challenge is. Um, real, reality fight. So um, the way uh, that um, you, um, why you choose making art, I think art is um, a communication, a way that you express your thought, your idea. Um, the first decade was um, uh, repeating the experience of that four years. Um, the second decade, uh, one would say that I uh, had that privilege working from Australia where grant, grants or where you can have access for support. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I did not uh, have represent gallery who represented me in Sydney where I work uh, from day one. Um, um, so this second decade uh, was, I think, um, benefit the first decade that I put my head. Mm, you're not being very clear, but never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, never mind. That's all right. You'll be unclear. Um, I think she's asking an art historian's question. She's divided your life up into decades, and this decade you did that. And, 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 I mean, you've got to face the fact that you were a very successful mural painting team leader for 10 years in Thailand after your initial problem with your... And then you came to Australia and ran back into a similar kind of problem. And that's yeah, why that's she asks... Yeah. Well, that's why she asks in her fourth question, many of your works are derived from personal experiences and yet there is often a deeper, more philosophical tone and tenor to the works in that they seem to be a presentation of the searching process itself, the search for some meaning. Where is home? Who am I now? Etc. Is it true for these works shown here today as well? And can you tell us about specific ones which refer to this learning experience or questions about where home is and so forth? Um, the moment when I execute the elephant in the bush, uh, I think I uh, make the mark uh, and I stop asking myself the question about identity, where I am and who am I to this place. Um, I think I moved quickly uh, by thinking of how I would deliver my idea, my thought. And uh, I focus on that way. That's why the elephant doesn't stay for long. Um, I had uh, the Thai script. I had a um, layer of um, veil uh, in front of my work. Uh, I had um, difficulties, um, uh, not difficulties, maybe um, the point to make um, about, um, about, um, cultural difference, um, which, we, which could, could, could be varied, but it's always uh, informed me how, uh, you know, the receiving end and my uh, point of deliver, how, how it has been obscure or how, how that is that, uh, um, that kind of veil in front between, um, between 
the, the message. Um, so I can only articulate it about um, about how how I interpret the, the way I execute and the way. Um, I mean, Tran is a very very difficult person to walk down the street with. Certainly, she was when she sit, we arrived in Sydney, because um, we go walk down the street, and she give the Thai names for all of the plants in the street. Now, I don't think you could have done that in Melbourne, because they wouldn't have the flora, they wouldn't have had the same flowers and trees. So, perhaps I knew what all the trees, and apart from the Australian native trees, of course, but anyway, what all the imported trees were and all the imported flowers, she knew it immediately. So she could use these kind of naming devices to say she was at least familiar with the plants. It gave her a kind of landscape, didn't it? Yes, but that is also a reason behind it. Uh, it's, I, think, um, I think I was, um, I was out of my place. And the way um, sometimes um, you can get, get rid of um, the social awkwardness, um, not belong by not looking at people's eyes. I looked up and I found this plant soothing. And um, also it's the fact that um, the plants had this familiarity with the place where I came from in Thailand. So I have Phuong Chumpu, I have Gan Chitani, I have Lan Tong, and I uh, write that down in my sketchbook. Um, only to forget about it until one day I stumble on my earlier, the earliest sketchbook, and there you go, we have, I have 70 names written down in Thai script. I decided that uh, it's the point, from that point, to make it as a statement that this is how I uh, can. I can articulate my awkwardness through the practice. I could go on a long time on that question. But anyway, question five is, having migrated here over 20 years ago, that's when I came here in 1996, a fact which I'm always reminding Australian curators who call her a Thai artist or a Thai Australian artist, I said she's been here for all more than 20 years. She's been a citizen since 2004. Why are you calling her a Thai artist like that? But anyway, I mean, it, it's a nice way of reminding you that you didn't, you weren't born here, you don't belong here, and all that crap. And you, and, and you think you, you kind of look at them and you think, don't you know what you're doing? Because every migrant artist in Australia knows what you're doing, and perhaps they're too polite, and they're not perhaps. I'm not angry enough to tell you, well I am. <laughs> um, so having migrated here over 20 years ago, how did you help yourself build a relationship with the place? We just indicated that. Perhaps, especially as an artist can, Yvonne imagines, be quite isolating. Were you isolated? Um, you had two children. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, two children. I mean, you can try, but it doesn't work. Um, the fact that I have very few uh, artists who I can share with, um, it's uh, growing by number uh, at later time. Um, to, to, to have come from a uh, temple painting business, uh, it was already isolated back home in my country. Um, I approached this young lady asking to come and see her studio the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and said, oh, you're lucky. I'm only in Bangkok two days a month, uh, two, two days a year. She's, at, she's not, she, I mean, this whole thing about people being, have, giving them a cultural identity. When the artist is not in Bangkok, not in the Bangkok art world, in a temple somewhere in the countryside, painting away for three months. Uh, and this is a completely different identity to um, Well, um, to, 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 to say further about uh, isolation uh, is um, John 
was an art historian. That's how we met. Now, the, when we met at the very first day, he came with a large book, a thick book of all of Thai artists you can name at that time without my name in it. <laughs> um, so that's how I selected it. Well, given the fact that I started in 1982, that was before that book published in 1990. But don't, don't quite dis disturb people because the same year, you know, the year after I met you, you were on the cover of the National Colour magazine with the three other or four other women artists. Of Thailand, of, of status. So I'm, you are. I, 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 I must say that it. when um, the notion of um, women artists, oh, yeah, feminist, arrived, uh, arrived yeah. uh, why I was the first woman artist who broke the law by painting in the Thai temple in 1982. So, um, you know, in the magazine, um, it, um, it may tell something, it may not tell everything. Um, so um, perhaps, perhaps I, um, perhaps the way I said how isolated is, uh, it's because um, my experience is not shared, um, uh, maybe. Um, so uh, when I arrived here in, in, in Sydney, how the word isolation is that um, in the exhibition that was shown at Drill Hall um, in, a, um, in ACT, in Canberra, um, during the time there was a visitor, uh, an audience who approached and said that it's beautiful, it's uh, exquisite, but what about the story? I don't understand. Um, that was um, my first encounter um, about uh, about the narrative, uh, which doesn't belong. Well, they'd say the same for like a Christian muralist got off the boat at Bangkok in 1680. Um, <laughs> to, to, to question seven, I, I've left out question six because you've really answered it there. Last, last question from Yvonne, and then we'll have some Q&A from the floor. Could you share with us your current next project? Is there anything else you would like to add or share with us today? Okay, my current project is to rub the stone that I collect from a mountain, uh, not a mountain, a hill, in the south of Thailand, in Songkla, and uh, get the pigment, and I dye the fa fabric into that pigment, then stitch uh, the line um, and make my silent poetry into that piece of fabric. Um, it relate, however, it relate to my more recent, my, 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 my um, before I went to Thailand. Um, I went in April. But in November, I um, presented my work at the Lewis House um, at Penrith Regional Gallery, and that acknowledged the river. And it started from uh, the, the book by Grace Casker, People of the River. Um, to that, uh, my work uh, dedicated to the hist history, the historical content the layer of uh, this possession about the people who stay there for uh, longer before the settlement, before the um, um, before the Lewis house. Uh, I work with the gardener, and um, part of my work uh, had the content of the river mean I have river water in container with my offering bowl with the ingredient of the herb from my garden. So put that together, it's acknowledged uh, the layer of the history of the land. Uh, in Songkla, I found the same thing. Uh, not that I went searching 
in the first place. But it must have been resonant to me how that river, uh, during the time when uh, I work, when we work, Sue and I, Sue Petley, who uh, at that time uh, we collaborate into making the work for the Lewis House. Um, um, the fact that there was flood, the fact that um, um, the vegetation, here we go again, uh, we went to the vegetation and uh, I uh, put together, built a boat from the bamboo that I got from um, the river's house in the garden. And the banana tree uh, that I start strip and then put it, um, dry it, and then wove uh, it into uh, in, in, into a structure and put it together. Um, when it was shown, there was a lady who came into the room, and that was only me and this lady, and she looked at it, and she looked at me. She looked at the world, she looked at the boat, and um, she looked at me and she said, Navi, Navi is the indigenous, the word of First Nation people, of the canoe that went out fishing. Uh, by women, sometimes with baby in tow. So that was, that was, so that was, um, that was the, um, that, that was the moment of acknowledging that I am here when, when we communicate through my art. Uh, in Songkhla, I said that I did not, well, I did not go in search of that. But when visiting places, um, and this also the place of this position, the place where three temples of Muslim um, Islamic temple, the Chinese temple and the Thai Buddhist temple, were in the same landscape, and I um, met a bookbinder. And um, so we communicate and we were talking about how to write, um, how to do the book binding. And then we follow it, we walk into a project that I built a book of poetry in silent of this washed stone pigment. So that is my current project. Um, I hope that there may be a few questions from the floor, please. Um, Dr. Wang, <clears throat> your work is always evolving. You know, you're always coming up with new concepts, or as we can see in this exhibition already, you know, always developing your, your work from the early, you know, Thai mural to contemporary works, and I know you've both also done a lot of installation. So if one day someone is writing a biography of you as an artist, how would you like to be described or remembered as an artist? An artist. <laughs> um, what more do I say? Uh, I am an art worker. Um, I am not quite uh, myself outside the studio practice. John knows. John knows. Um, so um, maybe an art worker, or maybe um, you know to be to to. to to modify, to elaborate, um, I use my practice as the language to communicate. So, yes, please. First of all, my apologies for our being late. Um, and I've only just had an initial cursory view, but one thing I've noticed in all your paintings, uh, particularly the lovely one behind you, um, is that they all seem to be appear to be painted in an, an evening or a nighttime scene, mm -hmm. not during the day. Like the, the sky in this painting here behind you is like a, a tan right. sienna colour. And then also the, the ground uh, is also like a red ochre. Uh, is that simply because of you wanted the total composition of the colour scheme 
for this particular painting. And then also with regards to the others, um, is there some significance about what appears to be, in my view, uh, more of a late afternoon or evening or nighttime scene? Um, we leave this one last uh, because it's 2018. Um, um, yes, it's true that, um, you know, you may say it's uh, night sky, but um, I think I was influenced by um, the, um, the style or the form of a mural painting in large space. The way you can uh, paint a large scale painting is you have a dominant color scheme. Um, my color scheme, uh, starting from uh, this, um, we are talking about um, the work in this exhibition. So the earliest one is 2003. It, was, it started from uh, the regrowth after the bush fire uh, a year earlier. So there was that uh, black and dark, um, um, you know, um, element in the scene. Um, also, um, the paint, the color of the regrowth um, is, um, to be precise, is the it's it's kind of fresh green um, ornament. When you look at, um, if you uh, if you uh, can imagine the the regrowth after, you know, this whole dark trunk, you have this fresh spring out of that. It's contrast, but it's uh, light for me. Uh, when I put the contrast paint together, um, we are talking about the elephant and the bush, um, the red and the blue, the orange and the blue, the red and the green, and um, the um, uh, with, uh, with dark, when the two contrasts put together, if you mix in the paint in the palette, it's turned muddy. If you mix it on, on the painting, you have the whole illusion that it's turned into dark because of the contrast um, paint blend together or it's elusive to that. Uh, nevertheless, it shows that vi vi um, vibrant, um, you know, that, 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 that um, uh, quality of, uh, of the, the paint itself, of the color. Um, with other is, uh, because that one particularly, that, uh, it was because I made work from collage out of the textile, out of the fabric that I, uh, learn how to weave. So that piece is that a collage came out of the uh, woven fabric that I learned from Isan in the northeast of Thailand during the residency um, in 2008. And I write the script. Um, I acknowledge Kambota Art Center because that um, gave me, um, you know, sure, Michael yes. is here. Um, I was in at the edge of elsewhere, the um, the exhibition edge of elsewhere, where I work with fabric and work with community, and also uh, this is my part. It's the it's the later project, and I have this um, a cutting of uh, the leftover. So I started using that and built a landscape and the urban. Uh, architect, you see uh, that building behind that, and to acknowledge the uh, the um, the, land, um, the landscape, but the color. Uh, to look at it, I talked to Simon the other day that to me it's also have the element of the First Nation, the color scheme and everything. It might have influenced me one way or another, the way that the Thai, the temple painting, I uh, have influence into my, my, my painting. Uh, now I said that I uh, leave it uh, to the last. Um, the sky, the Siena sky, uh, actually is the background for, this was not 
a painting alone. The work was a cluster of uh, installations with object pieces with paper cut out like shadow. I only show this is to uh, make the painting um, process of painting uh, to be um, to, 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 to be presented in this exhibition. Uh, I have only partial uh, work of object here, but um, there are also uh, uh, Thai script ink um, written and drawing, linear drawing on perspex uh, panel, which is um, layers on top and at above a uh, level on top of the sky. So it's become layer. So as a whole, um, that background was prepared to um, to, um, to to put it together with the layer. So it's uh, thank you for that question because then I have the chance to explain this work. So it's not the same reason that it's the night sky. It's from different influences, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, this is during the whole decade, and 2018 is out of that um, that period already. Yes. So, um, yeah, that was interesting, thank you, and that question really helped. So do you feel that you're, um, you know, you, you come from this um, temple tradition and that, you know, this addresses that uh, tradition, this painting, which I really love. Um, do you feel now that your work, um, you know, now that you've brought this other sense of materiality or this other type of materials, and a different materiality into the work that you you aren't satisfied with say straight painting or the straight the narrative that is just uh, reached by paint but that you need to bring the actual these other like the stones the rubbings the fabric the weaving um, you know that that's sort of moving into the work more than um, you know the more traditional painting. I mean, this sort of painting, you know, we've seen, um, you know, that bring can bring a contemporary narrative into it and, you know, different types of, um, you know, people and doing different things. And so that there is that possibility for that kind of work, but that you're now, you know, moving more to this other mixed media kind of, of um, you know, in your work. And how do you, how do you feel about that? You know, what, why do you think that's happened? And is it more satisfying to you to bring that into the work, some sort of tangible yeah. material? That is a good question, thank you. Um, it's not about unsatisfactory, uh, rather it's uh, the way to communicate. And I had that um, tricky question about the narrative. And um, the, uh, it, it, apparently, it's the it's the the obstacle how to how to deliver the message. Uh, leave that aside. Uh, to talk about painting, uh, I um, started um, by living the environment, and I was trained by my father, a writer and a sculptor, and not painting. Uh, and um, why I said sculpture, it was because um, out of the whole atelier, the whole um, uh, um, students or follower of my father who he had kept during the time of, of when I was about 10 to 20, um, he passed away when I was 22, um, of all these atelier with uh, he could not find a person who could uh, make a sculpture, a small miniature sculpture. Um, so he kept rejecting until I think then he put me in a position where I, and then overnight, and then he said, this is it, this was it. Without training, without saying what he wanted, it was a sculpture of the half uh, man, half bird. Uh, but because we have um, children in uh, running around, so um, 
I was trained with my hand to build things. Um, he also uh, teach me how to lay brick. Um, so of that painting, painting uh, has become my skill when I start uh, working in temple. And um, like John said that, um, you know, temple painting is one way that you can finance uh, the whole team uh, to keep them go going. Um, I learned how to do um, mosaic glass put together. I learned the lacquer painting. Um, plaster. 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 Um, so back to the painting and why uh, it's, it's when the message need object. I moved into object. Um, in 2007, um, John was in Europe and I, you know, that was this long distance that I did not want to leave uh, the children away from father and that was uh, John's um, idea too. So we all went there. Um, the result, at the result, I lose my studio. So I started packing the knitting, the making with my hands, uh, even postcard. Um, I have stack of handmade paper with me and then uh, work. So um, that was uh, work that uh, a series of postcard and object of um, um, the, 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 the fabric that I wore and uh, made a container which captured the, with, with, with uh, put as for me, the meaning of holding that breath during when you breathe in, breathe out uh, with that. So um, it's because the message needs that kind of um, communication that I want to capture this. And because uh, I have that skill, so I put it together. Um, the sat satisfaction out of painting is still the same, still there. Um, the object or the installation and other elements. I also have, um, later, I also have sound element and the uh, fragrant, like the herbs, into that. Um, and um, I, uh, I would say that it, bring, it had brought me close to the literary and the visual language together. Mm -hmm. um, in that sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Probably quite a lot for yeah. more days. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you. Yeah. Thanks everyone for um, joining us today again. And thank you, Patawan and John, for a very informative and um, you know uh, interesting talk. So if you can put your hand together for John. <laughs> Here and um, thank you, Simon. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. So, have a drink thank and you. continue to have the conversation with Pastor Wan and John and uh, have a look at the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.